Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Fahan Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this self-study kit, Deploying Cisco Unified Contact Center Enterprise with CVP 11.5, I'm going to show you how to prepare and configure Cisco Unified CVP Peripheral Gateway or PG. Now, we already have configured the Peripheral Gateway or PG for our call manager, but this is more focused on the CVP side of it. Now, if you take a look at our topology, we have two CVP server right here, and these two CVP server will communicate with uh, call manager, sorry, with the ICM through these two PG, uh, PG. So we're gonna make sure that both of these servers can communicate with the Rogger A and Rogger B. Now we already we have already configured PG1 for our call manager in US cluster and PG2 for our India Finas, uh, sorry India cluster. Whereas in for the CVP we're going to use PG3. Okay, so the first thing first, let's go to uh, what we're going to do is first configure and customize the PG Explorer. So for that, we need to log into our administration server right there. All right, so what we're, what, what we're looking here is uh, we're going to start configuring the PG Explorer. And as you can see, the Explorer is already open from our previous lab. So I'm going to retrieve that. We already have two PG, one for uh, India cluster, one for US cluster for call manager. And I'm going to add a third PG. We're going to call this CVP PG. We'll call it IBR PG, uh, yeah, CVP PG. Uh, the client type for this type of PG is generally is VRU, Voice Response Unit, and the primary CTI address will be the IP address of the PG server itself, which is 55 and 65. All right, now we already have one PG enabled, so what we're gonna call this PGA, CVP PGA, and then we're going to select enable post routing so that we can uh, request a route from the CVP server. We are going to go uh, routing client. We'll call this CVP RC underscore A. And that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to add a second one. And this is going to be B. Enable post routing. And then click on the routing client. And we're going to call this CVPRC underscore B itself. Now we're going to save that. Now in order to use CVP, we need to create uh, something called Network VRU. So let's go and create a Network VRU. We will call this CVP VRU type 10 and save now in order to contact our cvp we need a label so we're going to add a label and the label is going to be routing client for cvp 4999 again this is an arbitrary number you can choose any number you want this is a five digit number and we need to add this for every single routing client that we have so for b We're going to add one for routing client in US. India will not act as routing client. So we're going to just choose the US cluster for now. OK, so what we have here is four routing client responsible for routing calls for 49999 label. So go ahead and save. OK, it's a unexpected communication loss so let's go ahead and close this okay so I do have 
CVP created except that uh, VRU did not got created 4999 exclusive router denied because router is not, is not initialized its configuration okay so we're going to close this and then open the configuration manager again So we're going to try again. Okay, so it accepted it. So I'm going to add a next one. Alrighty, so we have, well, I don't need the last one. So I have four a label can be returned for this CVP. And again, depending on where the call is coming from, we need to make sure that um, the routing client is able to route a call for that particular label. All right, so now that it is done, I need to go back to the PG Explorer. So we need to now apply this particular VRU to each CVP Explorer. So I'm going to go to CVP PGA, go to Advanced tab. I must select the VRU that I want to apply to this particular CVP. And I will do the same thing for B. And there we go. All right, so I'm done with the, uh, with the CVP part. So one thing I do need to, however, note it down is the logical controller ID is 5002 PGA I need to find out the peripheral ID which is 5004 and 5005 respectively so 5002 4 and 5 all right so I'm done with this the next step is to connect to the PG server Uh, actually before I go and connect to the PG server what I want would like to do is configure the CVP so let's go to CVP operation console it would be nice if the server is actually on so let me go and turn on this feature of the server ah. Hate this new interface of VMR. Such a sensitive. Okay, so I am in my operation console manager or console server. So right now what I'm going to do is log into the CVP console and then I'm going to manage the two CVP server that we have. So to do that, Operation console. Now you can or create a little uh, shortcut to your desktop. Okay, so what I'm what I'm going to do is first is start adding components. So I'm going to add the call call server. So this is the CVPA. Uh, 
is going to be five digit uh, DNIS that is your uh, length of your uh, it's what we call label if call goes to uh, when, when a call arrive for this extension which is your label I would like this calls to go to uh, let's see rack 6 63 I believe was my gateway well let's make it 100 any calls to India cluster which will be 157 26 1.11 US cluster will be 21 you can create 22 backup if you want uh, for example I can create 3 That's not it. So, if CVP receive a call with is starting with three, is going to send the call to subscribe uh, subscriber in India cluster or publishers uh, sub, uh, publisher at India cluster or subscriber at India cluster. Uh, that is multiple time. And if it is receiving a call with extension 4, it's going to send it to the US cluster. If it receives a, um, a call with the label 4999, then the call will be sent to the VXML gateway. In this case, 100 is the VXML gateway. Now, I need 91, which should send the calls to same as your VXML so this is my VXML gateway so I must do that for 91 and 92 which is the error code and the ringtone code right here so that should satisfy most of the requirement so I will go ahead and say save and deploy Okay, so now I'm going to add a second one. This is going to be CVPB. Sixty-two. Five. Enable. Oops. So same concept. So three, one, fifty-six, twenty-six, eleven. This is your VXML gateway, and last one will be 91 and then 92. Both will go to the VXML gateway. Okay, so let's save. So while we're configuring this, you also want to make sure that you add the gateway address so even if you don't have access to the gateway right now you can always add that gateway right here so we'll call this uh, VXML gateway now next step is adding a VXML server
VXML server is the same server as your CV, CVP, so 52, we call it VXML A. It's going to use the call server A or B. Okay, so the next thing added twice, so basically Okay, so next step is gateway is done, media server. Now media server usually the IP address of your web server where the prompt files are. So in this case, the CVP server will be the media server. Web server A. So let's go and add the second one. That is your site B. Followed by I, uh, call manager address should also be included. If the call manager address is not there, you will not be able to send calls to it. It's like a kind of a permission thing. Again, what is important here is that all the call measures must be defined here, both pub and sub. These host names are irrelevant. They're not really that significant at this moment. ICM will put the IP address of our PG. So again, keep in mind that the UCCE do not actually talk directly to CVP, it goes to the PG. Okay, so pretty much everything is configured here that I need. Now, only thing I need to do is make to reboot the CVP server. So you can always go to system call center, see the status. See, they're done right now, which is fine because right now nothing has been configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot. Okay, so this is my uh, CVPA. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the CVP server. And this is B. Okay, so we have configured all, as you can see, they're partial right now. And the VXML server is up. So next step is to configure the PG
So I'm going to open PGA. Not sure. Let me just double check, make sure it's not already open. Uh, nope. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is run the PG setup. So you want to go to UCC tools, peripheral gateway setup. Remember PG1 and PG2 is already configured. So we're gonna use PG3 in this in instance. So PG3 is gonna be duplex and it's going to be based on VRU. Now remember this is 5002, the logical controller ID, so we're going to add 2PIM there. CVP peach. Now the peripheral ID uh, is, let me double check, can you remember now? I'm going to log back into the admin server. So PGA is 5004 and 5005. So this is going to be 5004. This is the IP address of your CVP server, so 6452. Connection is, uh, VRU connection port is always 5000 by default. Of course, something that you can change in the CVP server. So I'm going to add the second PIM, CVP PGP 5005, is it? Double check again. again. Yeah, 5,005, 62, and it's 5,000 again. All right, so now I have both PIM configured. So this is, on a single CVP server, is highly redundant to both PG, uh, CVP and CVPB. So now these are my private interface for my PG server. So in this case, 55 and now I'm going to configure the public interface of my PG server this is the router address public for B side B Okay, so the, all the, it's very important that you check the IP addresses there because the incorrect IP address will cause the server to reboot uh, in some cases. So it's extremely important that you configure that accordingly. Okay, so you can, well, I should have PG3 right there, is running. So what I want to do right now is run the diagnostic tools to validate to make sure that it is active. But before I do that, I also have to make sure my CVP server is online.
okay it shows that CVP PGA and PGB both are active when both are configured to be active that means it was able to communicate with the CVP server properly and, as, and if you go back to CVP portal you'll see that both CVP A and CVP B both our status is up okay so now I'm done with PGA so I'm going to configure the redundant site which is PGB I'm gonna do the same thing So run the PR peripheral gateway setup. Same number PG number three is gonna be site B duplex VRU. Next. Remember this is 5002. First PIM. Make sure it's enabled. Some people always forget to enable it. So these are the two spim that I have. Continue next. So now I'm going to define the public interface. So click next. It's always a good idea to make sure that you can ping both site A and site B respectively. Okay, so PG3B is also running, so I'm going to run, open the diagnostic framework to validate to make sure it is uh, configured. So I'm going to refresh it. Now, obviously, site B usually remain idle. So what I want to do is go back to site A, uh, PGA, as you can see, is still active. What I'm going to do right now is shut down PG3 to see if PGB actually site B actually picks up or picks it up or not. So I'm going to shut down the PG3A. So it's stopping. I want to check if any any changes happen on the see. There you go. The backup automatically took took over. So it's pretty uh, quite fast, which is good. All right, so I'm going to turn the service back on and what I have right now an integration between a CVP server and UCCE platform. So that's pretty much it for this particular lab. I will see you in the next